Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Um, in this video, we're going to be comparing the old version, this one, to the new version of this 30 watt Chinese FM stereo transmitter. So these can be had on eBay for about 85 bucks. Um, the old one here, I've tested on the spectrum analyzer before, which is here. And it has about a negative 25 to negative 35, and it ranges. Sometimes it changes based on frequency or power output. But the spurious is approximately negative 25 to negative 35. This one is approximately negative 45. And I've gotten two of these. I've got this one, and I've got this one over here. This one, you can see it looks different. That's because I took the screen off of it. It has a little pin header right there that you can pull stuff off of. So I just unscrewed the little spacer things that hold it on. And now I'm left with a transmitter where I can see all of the components. So there's something interesting uh, about this transmitter that I want to show you guys. And what that is is... They've done some pretty bad engineering work on this in order to actually lower the output power because the driver on this has been changed. So what they did is on the original one here, you can't see the driver chip because it's under that screen. But this one uses the KT0803L FM transmitter chip. And that chip is a pretty low quality chip and it produces a lot of spurious signals. However, on the new one, they're using the Quintec QN8066 FM transmitter chip, which has much less spurious and noise and much higher performance in general. But it has a higher output power than the other ones. And I guess the engineers, what I'm guessing is they copied this amplifier circuit from somewhere else because I've seen it on numerous different designs so I think this has been copied a lot of times and so what they did to cope with the higher power from that chip it doesn't seem to want to focus on it but it's that one right there what they did to cope with that is instead of lowering the bias voltage on the driver transistor or uh, maybe eliminating one of those first two stages right there which you can barely see because it's very blurry but there's two small transistors right in the center of the screen there they lead into this larger transistor and that finally leads into the final which is a RD30 HVF1 so what they did is instead of lowering the voltage on these uh, transistors they unmatched the circuit so that it would produce lower drive power to this device so that it wouldn't blow it out. The problem with that solution, and you can see where they did it right there, there should be a component right there where you see those two solder pad places right in the center of the screen where clearly a component was either not placed or removed. You can see on the old design, see how there's two components leading into that uh, inductor, that uh, spirally thing on the board there's those two components leading at the front of it if you look on this one there's only the one there's that other black thing which is also on here but it's kind of at a different location but that's the same thing but you can see that they did remove one of those two components so they're unmatching the circuits essentially doesn't overdrive that device the problem with this method is that now when you run this transmitter you can only run it at full power because if you run it at reduced power it produces a bunch of spurs that you will so soon see on the spectrum analyzer in a second okay so now I have it hooked up to the spectrum analyzer I have it supplied only with 8 volts right now because I want to show you something interesting Here's the spectrum analyzer. And also, just to note, I'm using a pretty shitty camera, so it doesn't autofocus for some reason. But 
that says negative 4 dBm. And there's the signal. Doesn't look too bad. But, but that's mainly because it's so low power right now. But I want to show you something. So, there's the part that I was talking about being unmatched. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the screen. And I'm going to put my finger there. And just watch what happens. Look at that. Goes all the way up to 2 dBm from negative 4. See? That's how much they unmatched it. And that's just... That's just my finger going on it. So it could be even more unmatched than that. Because, I mean, like, what's a finger going to do? So clearly it needs another capacitor right there. Um, but now here's the thing. In order to fix this, it's going to require not only fixing that matching right there, but then also lowering the bias voltage to that transistor so it doesn't overdrive that thing. So two components, maybe even more, will likely have to be changed to fix this. Now, would a normal person want to fix this? Um, if you want to run it at lower powers, you definitely want to fix it. But if you are always going to run it at 30 watts, it seems to work fine. I'll show you what it looks like at 30 watts. So, I can't do this for too long because I have this uh, little attenuator in here and that thing does overheat quickly. So, I'm going to do this quickly. But I'm going to start turning up the voltage. Alright, we're at 9 volts, 10 volts, 11, 12, point 12.6 okay so you can see we've got 15.11 dBm and you know there's a little bit of noise down there but it is better than the original version of this transmitter so not too bad and when I you'll see when I lower it down lower the supply voltage back down to 8 there's no real big spurs appearing. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put the screen back on here. And I'm going to show you how to make the spurs appear. Basically what you do is you put the screen on and you lower the output power on the screen instead of the supply voltage. And if you lower the output power from the screen, that's what causes all the spurs to appear on there. So... If you do want to, you, you can either fix the problem by trying to do what I'm probably going to do in a later video at some point if I get around to it. Uh, you can fix the components, that's one way, which will make it a lot nicer and probably a lot less spurious in general. But if you want to just run it at lower power but don't want to screw around with anything, the way to do that is to change the input voltage instead of changing the power on the display screen that they have. So I'm going to put the display screen back on here and I'm going to show you what happens. Okay, I've got the display installed again. I've now set my power supply to 12.6 or 12.5 instead of 8 as it was before because we want to run it up to full power. Now what happens is when this thing first starts up it will automatically ramp its power up so we can watch on here as the power goes up you'll see all the spurs that it creates then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the power output here and you'll see how much more spurs are created at a power level that is under full power which is 30 watts so we're over here I've got the wire and power it up gotta do this quick because I don't want to burn out that attenuator okay we're hooked up there it is. And look at that. See that? And then it goes away as it goes up. See? So it's almost reached peak. It's almost at 15 dBm, which is basically 30 watts because I've got the attenuator. 
so we're a little above 15 dBm. And what's kind of weird is it was originally 15.75, and now it's gone to 15. Point one for no reason, so I don't know if something degraded, but yeah, I don't, who knows. Anyway, there it is. That's what it looks like. Let's look on here. There's our screen. Uh, we're gonna go to the PO option, so I'm gonna press the middle button and hold it. And you see frequency, volume, power. Now I'm gonna turn the power down. Let's turn it down to, I don't know, 10. There we go. Set. Now let's watch it. Look at that. And it stays there. Look at how bad that is. Now, that's pretty bad, but what happens if we touch it at that location? I'm going to try to get my finger in there. And watch the screen. Look, there it goes. Because we just matched it with my finger, or at least matched it much better. See? So clearly, this, this transmitter is not very well designed. If the engineers really knew what they were doing, they would have lowered the voltage to those transistors, but kept the matching proper. Because why would you mess up the matching just to lower the output power? That's a really stupid way of doing it. So anyway, I just want to show you guys. And the solution for it is, like I said, don't change the power output via the screen. You can only change it via the supply. And if you change it via the supply, this kind of thing won't happen. So that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I might release another one in the future of me attempting to repair this and see if I can make it produce a clean output at all power levels. We'll see how that goes. So thanks for watching guys and stay tuned.